Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us this Friday afternoon. This handsome guy to my left is Caleb McCabe. I am Travion Davis, and this is Topic of Discussion, where we give you our opinions on the latest and breaking um, sports stories. Um, first up, you, have you heard about the, the Pacquiao and Mayweather fight, man? How do you? Man, I've been hearing about it for the last five years. Yeah. Is it ever going to happen or what? Um, let his headline, Pacquiao says that Mayweather is afraid of him. Do you think that Pretty Boy Floyd is afraid of the Pac-Man? Okay, okay. Now, I, I saw the segment that you're talking about. He Pacquiao was on ESPN's first take mm -hmm. yesterday. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if any of the viewers saw it, but Pacquiao was asked if he thought Floyd Mayweather was afraid of him. And Pacquiao literally sat there and told all the entire world that he thought that Mayweather was. And, yep. I mean, at, I used to think maybe it was the other way around whenever uh, Floyd Mayweather wanted the Olympic-style drug mm -hmm. dr uh, drug and steroid yep, testing. He tried to just go way above yeah, that one. Yeah, and, yeah, and I, I mean, I can see why he, he would want that. And mm -hmm. Pacquiao, he said no. I don't know why. When it, right, right then I thought maybe he's like – he was roiding up. But now that Pacquiao's come out and said that he would give 55% of the funds from the payout mm -hmm. to Mayweather, and he's calling him out publicly, yeah. I mean, at this point, I haven't heard a response from Floyd. So well, I'm you know, Floyd, would, he just served jail time. And yeah. the previous, like the blood test, you had said the previous blood test, he said it was against his religion. Whether that was true or false, I don't, I don't personally remember, uh, remember off top, but I honestly think that Mayweather is afraid of him. Um, this should have happened, what, way back in 2008, it's 2012 yeah. now. It's not as timely anymore. Um, you know, money, he's, his nickname is I mean, is Pacquiao money. lost, too. Yeah. So, I mean, that takes so much away from, exactly. the, whole, from, the, from, the, from whole, the whole idea of right, the fight. Right, right. I mean, like, now, I mean... I still consider Pacquiao one of the best, but he, he's got a loss now. Yeah. So, I mean, I just don't know if it's as much of a – they're not going to get near the payout, I I've, I've, I personally feel like, mm -hmm. if the fight does happen. Right. But it's, it's still a lot of money. Um, I don't yeah. remember the undisclosed amount, but it's still a lot of money. Um, like I said, 2008 is 2012. Both of them are aging now. Um I think it'll still be exciting because we've been wanting to see it for f for the past four years. Yeah. But, I mean, it's boxing. Like, boxing is dying out. UFC is taking over. It, it might be the only fight that can save the sport. I mean, yeah, I'll, sit here, yeah. I'll sit here and agree with you all day on that one. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Hopefully, it'll come closer. Maybe not. What, what we'll do we see. have next? What do we have next? Um, the next topic of discussion mm -hmm. is um, – I'm sure everyone has heard the whole situation with uh, Chad Johnson, formerly Ocho Cinco. Mm -hmm. um, he was accused of and took the plea, or he took the plea bargain, correct? Yeah, played no contest okay. to, uh, uh, to jail time. Uh, yeah, uh, apparently yeah. he yeah. headbutted his wife. Yes. And, right. I mean, I guess with the no contest, it's got to be he must have. Yeah. And... Um, Oh, man, you, you, what like what is what exactly? What is your take on that? Because do you know anything about his wife? Like what his former wife? Because I know the, she was on what the basketball yeah, wise. The, the was it basketball wise? Yeah, or, yeah. Or Miami I, or Atlanta, one of yeah. the shows. But have you like seen her her actions on the show? Like no, no. I've I can certainly say I, I will never watch for one of those shows. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, I did see her on Hard Knocks, mm -hmm. and um. She kind of seemed like she might have been kind of one of the, you know, kind of like the the crazier ones. Yeah, yeah. And she um, was, she was I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, don't do not get me wrong. I don't think she deserves to be head to right. be head butted. Right, right. And um, the thing about this is, should he serve? Des Bryant apparently hit his mom with a baseball hat. I mean. You shouldn't even do do that, but whenever you're talking about headbutting a woman, yeah. that's a big deal, man. I mean, yeah. I think, I mean, now I th I think the, the the any kind of pro athlete is just getting away with 
any kind of crime. Dante Stallworth a few years back. Yep, he killed he killed the guy. Yeah, driving. Yeah, he, he killed a guy and was in jail for thirty days. Yeah, and thirty then days. And then house arrest. Like, yeah, I don't I don't know. Me personally, um, you know, just watching her throughout the show and some of her actions. They in the police report it kind of said that she provoked it. Now, am I saying that she deserved it? No, but yeah. I mean. As far as him serving jail time for hitting a woman, um, I just we don't know all the facts. We don't yeah. know all the facts of the police and report. Yet. We never it's will. Been, and it's been a month now, yeah. almost. So, um, if he does serve jail time, I think his career possibly could be over because people they don't want to take a chance on him anymore. He yeah. he's he fizzled out after uh, he destroys after locker rooms. England. He destroys locker rooms. Well, man. I don't even think he destroys locker rooms per se. I just think that. He loves attention. Like, he yeah. was never a bad guy. Nobody had any history of arresting Chad Johnson prior to that incident. He's been in the league, what, the past, what, 12, 10 years. I'm sorry, 10 years. Something like that, yeah. And he was a consistent receiver since 2002 for one team. But he's aging, like I said. Now, as far as the jail time goes, I honestly don't think that he should serve the jail time simply because of her past history. That's just like the whole ordeal with yeah. um, Ron Artest and his his whole other thing. Anything that he does, he's always going to be labeled as a troublemaker. No matter it can yeah. be the simplest foul, <laughs> he's going to be labeled as a troublemaker. So I just if a lot of people can get off of some certain things that are worse, if you can get just thirty days for killing a man, then I don't think that yeah. you have to go to jail just for defending yourself because. Like I said, she they said she provoked the situation, so mm -hmm. I, we just I just need more facts. I need yeah. more facts. Speaking of NFL, the hot debate right now are the NFL replacement refs. Man, don't even get me started. <laughs> don't don't even get me started. <laughs> like, what's your take on that? Because they're are they taking do you think they're taking more heat than we're actually giving them? Or do you think they're actually doing that bad of a job? Like what's your, what's Man, your take on it? I'll sit here. I will say I don't think that they are doing as terrible as everyone portrays them to be, with, which is just like they're acting like that they're uh, middle school refs. But they're blowing important calls. like well, Especially uh, in the, the Green Bay game versus um, San Francisco a couple of weeks back. That was – and I know within the first two weeks, more pass interference calls have mm -hmm. been called in the first two weeks and have been called in the first two weeks in the last two years mm -hmm. combined. Mm -hmm. And um, I just don't really think you can put all the blame on them. I mean, they're, they're, they're not even really college refs. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're like – D three refs. There's, there's. So you said D three is not even. No, right. no, but, but no, no. But like, I, I'm talking about like you know, like if you're thinking replacement refs, probably a lot of people are thinking like, oh, they got people from like the SEC. Right, they got people right, from from the Big right, Twelve. Right. But like, um, there's one that that was a lingerie football league ref. Like, really, you're gonna put the NFL games in charge you, of a lingerie football okay, league ref? While we're on this. Did you hear about the guy who told um, – I can't even remember the player's name, but he told him, hey, I have you on my fantasy team. I can't remember what game it was. That's but just like, like that just shows you, like, the stature that they aimed for. Yeah. The replacement. So in my opinion, they're terrible. Like, I'm just going to be downright honest. The replacement refs are terrible. We need to get this whole strike situation. Pay him. Pay him. Please, em. Roger Goodell, please pay fix this whole situation because they're messing up important games. They're messing up one of the top games of the week, the Green Bay and San Francisco game. There were so many pass interferences that were called that shouldn't have been called, and some that were called, I mean, that weren't called, that blatantly should have been called. We had blatant push-offs, like Michael Urban's playing again. <laughs> it was just – it was terrible. They missed so many false starts in scoring situations that – it just it looked bad. Pay but, him, please. Yeah, I just think that we, they deserve the heat that they're getting. They're doing a bad job. Please fix this whole situation. This is bad. Just get this over with because we need to enjoy our football. I know he needs to enjoy his football. You got to yes. really enjoy your football. So we just we need to fix that. And the refs in the Eagles game is. Do you think that? <coughs> 
is causing a level of concern for the Eagles since the way they're winning the way that they are. Like, nine turnovers in, in two, two games. games, and you won both of your games by one point. Like, uh, like how okay. do you, come on, man. How do you do that? In the first game of the year against the Cleveland Browns, I thought the Eagles did play very, very poorly. There's no way that they should have won that game. No. And whenever I saw that, I mean, if you look on paper, they're, they're top, top three I'll give them the top three in the NFC. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, top easy. And so whenever you see a team like that play that bad against the Cleveland Browns, you have to think, okay, it was the first game of the year, you know, you got you you you, you have to fix mm -hmm. yeah, fi you get the rest of things. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you get the rest And out. but I was maybe a, a little bit worried after that game mm -hmm. because Michael Vick threw four four receptions. The the defense played pretty well, but Vick was just just giving the ball away. Do you think that without Michael Vick there's no Eagles? 100%. 100%. He he, in my eyes, is one of the top five quarterbacks in this oh, yeah. league. I'll give you that. And but, like, at the same time, he threw 56 passes. That sounds like a Texas Tech football nah. game. Like, why not use LaShawn McCoy? You have one of the top running backs easily in the league with LaShawn McCoy. Why do you have Vic throwing 56 passes after you've criticized this man his whole entire career about, oh, well, he's not a passer from the pocket. Exactly. He's not a passer, period. He runs. Then why have him throw fifty six passes? The that makes the no only sense. the only thing the only way that I can explain it is mm -hmm. because I think Michael Vick is the MVP of that team. Mm -hmm. I think he is what makes them run, and I I feel like nine ninety nine point nine percent sure that he will he will fix this. May not be this week, may not be next week, but mm -hmm. he he will get this fixed, and I think. He will end up taking the Eagles t t t uh, to the playoffs. Okay, but so okay. So as far as a level concern, are we in level orange? Like where are we at right now? It's only it's only week three. None. No. No, no concern. No concern. I I have a that's a high concern for me. I just I don't nine turnovers in two games. <laughs> Stephenville Middle School doesn't. They don't. They don't do that. <laughs> like. Come on, nine turn, and you're winning both games by one point. They, you have Michael Vick. You they have, beat the Ravens. You have Deshaun, and they shouldn't have won that game. But they did. That's why they play the game. Oh my goodness. Okay. That's why they play the game. We're, we're Michael Vick. You said he was a top five quarterback. Yeah. They're debating Eli. Top five or just elite quarterback period? Do you think he is? Okay. Well, do you remember last year before the beginning of the season he was? interviewed and he was asked where that he thought he was to compare to the other quarterbacks mm -hmm. in the league and Eli said he was he said he deserved to be right there next to Tom Brady mm -hmm. Peyton Manning Philip Rivers mm -hmm. um and I'll be completely honest as a Cowboy fan whenever he said that I was thinking there is no <laughs> freaking way there is no freaking way I'm Eli glad Manning. you just admitted to everybody that you're a Cowboys don't be Cowboys. <laughs> that's another that's another story. well and I seriously thought there's no freaking way he can distinguish that. And look what he did. He went out and he won a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. And um, two last last game, he came back against the Tampa Bay Bucks, threw for 400 yards in the fourth quarter alone. Mm -hmm. this, he, he is 100% just making me bite my tongue on, one, on if I have anything to say bad about him. And, I mean, he's playing just out of his mind. What? Okay. Okay, now you just said had a terrible game, and then he got up to the fourth mm -hmm. and just dominated. Yeah. So are you saying – I'm about to play Skip Bayless here. Are you <laughs> saying that he is the improved version of Tim Tebow? Because, you know, Tim Tebow comes alive in the <laughs> Yeah. Field. So is he <laughs> the Tebow 2.0 per se, or is well, he – Okay, part, well, uh, let me say this. Would you put him in your top ten? Yeah. Right now? Yeah. Top ten? Top you, five. Regarding other quarterbacks in the top ten, such as because I would put, I'm not a Cowboys fan, but I put Tony Robo in the top ten. Yeah, look at him on paper; he's good. He gets overly blamed, but yeah, 100. percent Who do you also think has the most concern for? Well, not concern. Who's on a, I guess, um, under the watchful eye of winning a Super Bowl faster? Do you think it's someone like the Tony Romo's, or you have Mike Vick, who's been in the league since 2001? 
Never he played hasn't, one. He's not a, not a ring. Still, no. like who also do you think is on the watch five winning the Super Bowl as a quarterback? I mean, Philip Rivers as well. He doesn't have one. The, the thing about Rivers is that he doesn't have the team around him. He he, he doesn't. He that he should have done it whenever. LT was there mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Darren Sproles, and he didn't get it done. Um, I would say my top two, I think Michael Vick will take them to the playoffs, and I think this might be his last year to do it mm -hmm. because he's got to be like, like 34, 35. Mm -hmm. Like he's getting he's up, up there. He's getting, uh -huh. he's up um, there. And then after that, I think it, you have to think of um, a, a Tony R Romo or a Matthew Stafford, the Lions' offense has got to be top five oh, in, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. in the league. You have Megatron up there just catching God knows but what. You have, but that's the thing. Like, you really just don't have a compliment to Megatron besides Matthew Stafford himself. Like, that's why I wouldn't put Stafford up there yet because it's what just his – think it'll take like a few more years? Yeah, it's just his fourth, what, fourth or fifth year Something in like the that, league. yeah. So, if anything, I think my two concentrated – just eagle eye on it has to be either Tony Romo or Michael Vick. Tony Romo, you have so many weapons. Yeah. But, I mean, it's not Tony Romo's fault. It's more so the defense. 100%. Yeah. But, that, I mean, you have Vick who's what been What defense? In, yeah. yeah. I mean, well, they're, they're playing as a unit now. <laughs> so, but you have Mike Vick, the most, by far the most electrifying quarterback I've yeah. seen with my two eyes. And then you have Tony Romo who has the intangibles. They, like, they should both always have a chance within the next two or three years. We, we need right this now. This, they're not – first of all, they're not taking, they're not taking it this year because you have the Ravens coming out the AFC just beating. And then the NFC, you still have – The Patriots the are always a threat to go back to. And then you have to. Aaron Rodgers and the true, Packers over there. True, true. So, <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know. Viewers, what do you think? Oh, that's what you have to ask <laughs> yourself this question right now. Ask yourself that because we don't know. Just – but if anything, it has to be Tony Romo or Mike Vick. Agreed. Um, let's uh, transition to college now. We have our own Tarleton State University this Saturday against the Eastern New Mexico Greyhounds. Um, do you think Tarleton can bounce back after what happened last week? Man, they were in that game the entire time. It just – I don't really know – Leading. What happened. Leading by halftime. Um, 20 to 10. They, they've been playing great. Great so far this mm -hmm. year, knocking off uh, Midwestern State, mm -hmm. and then uh, almost, almost is pulling it off against ACU Abilene C Christian, and um, I think that they that they that they will uh, bounce back after the uh, heartbreaking loss, but um, I really don't think that they are going to go in there and just. I think that they want. I think they they want to bounce back. Mm -hmm. They're not they're not going to go in there and lay over. The, they want re revenge on whatever team mm -hmm. that they played for last week. Yeah, I mean, they're Tarleton is a they have a great football team. Um, I see them practice like the where I live. I live in you know. Yeah, I I would sit right above the practice field, so I hear them practice. I see them practice. I think they have the defense to knock them off, just because I know that East New Mexico is a had like a pass oriented uh team they probably pass i'm gonna say 80 times Oof. a game so i mean the the, West the defense though. is gonna be tired but they have the players to do it you have players like um deshaun phillips all conference you have marquise wiley you have matt nicky those guys will bring it to them then on the offensive side you have kids like uh jaquan fry you got arthur buckingham you got the quarterback aaron Doyle. the i, I the think the running back drum you have a lot of weapons yeah, and I think they'll they'll bounce back with no problem. I honestly do. I think Aaron Aaron Doyle will take this team to as far as as they will go with him. Mm -hmm. I think I think he should have started last year. I I I mean I remember hearing about him in in high school and he he was getting he was a big time recruit in high mm -hmm. school. Man, I don't know why that one that high school. One yeah day. yeah. I don't know why they waited so long to give him a chance. And look, the first chance he gets, he goes out and beats like the number four team yeah. so, in I mean, the nation. Yeah, they have the weapons. It's just, I guess it's all about a desire because, you know, last year things were kind of like this with them. They yeah. started out like this and then they just catapulted to straight success. So 
We'll see next week. I mean, well, not the next week. I should say Saturday. Yeah. Family weekend. We will see. Um, just a quick rundown of the NFL games. Um, this Sunday we have Tampa Bay and Dallas. What, what are you What are you thinking about that one? Well, man, I don't know how in the world Dallas got and got eight points <laughs> over the Buccaneers <laughs> after what that they did last week. Mm-hmm. Um, man, I, I think Dallas will pull it out, mm-hmm. but. I, I don't think it's going to be by eight, but um, I think it comes down to a game-winning field goal by Dan Bailey. Oh, no, I don't even think it's going to be that much. I, I think Dallas is going to come with it this week, even though I'm not a Cowboy fan at all. <laughs> Dallas is probably going to murder Tampa Bay simply because of what happened to them against the Seahawks. They They have to have some type of hunger in their stomach this week. If they don't, then I don't know what to say about that team anymore. Yeah, like I mean – if they lose to Tampa Bay, it might it might be a full blown yeah. Ar- yeah. Arkansas oh, yeah. emergency. Like yeah. the whole team might might just fold. Jerry, if y'all don't win this game, I'm not buying any more Papa Johns for you <laughs> because that is just it's Tampa Bay. It's Tampa Bay. Like come come on come on now. Washington uh, in Cincinnati got to be a good one. Got two young quarterbacks. Man, RG3 is looking like yes. 100% the offensive yes. so, rookie of the year. I mean, he's been going out there just lighting them up. He's pretty much been – I think he probably is the best quarterback right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll get, it's it's either out of him and um, I'll say Alex Smith. They're, yeah. Especially out of the NFC. They're, RG3 is just phenomenal. He's tearing right it up, which, which is why that they are giving – Washington three points in this mm-hmm. matchup against a team that went to the playoffs yeah. last year. Yeah, talking about playoffs. Well, I mean, I don't, do you? So you saying what? What are you projecting a score to look like? What do you? What do you? Man, think? I think, I think it might be a shootout. I think. Yeah. It, I think it might be. Um, I think Washington might cover the points. I think it might be forty-five to forty-two. Ooh, just man. barely covering. I don't know. That's it's two young teams. You, like I said, you have two young quarterbacks. You have Andy, uh, Andy Dalton in Cincinnati who lit it up last year. RG3 just came out here like he's looking like he's been in the league for, you know, three to four. I, I got Washington probably, mm, I'll say 31-27. So it's going to be a close game. It's going to be a good matchup. We got to watch for that one. Yeah. We uh, – uh, um, next, the, the the next game on Sunday, Houston and D- D- Denver. They're giving Houston two points mm-hmm. over the Broncos, which, man, Peyton Manning looked terrible uh, on Monday night. Right. But um, I think he's going to bounce back, man. Mm-hmm. I think he's going to bounce back. And, you know, Peyton Manning, he's a winner. Mm-hmm. Um, it, like you said, it's, it's Peyton Manning. Um, he did have a he – have, he had a foul out last week. But – I don't, I just it's 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 Peyton Manning like he has weapons now. If anything, I actually think that, and people are probably gonna call me crazy for this, but I actually think that he has a better team in Denver than he did in, in Indianapolis simply because he has a defense. Yeah, now. that's exactly what that he, I was about to say. He has two receivers, which he had in Indianapolis. He had mm-hmm. Pierre Garcon and Reggie Wayne, but you have two hungry young dudes. You have Eric Decker and you have Demarius Thomas. Man, Demarius and then Thomas, you have a he's running a freak game. athlete. Exactly. So, and then the defense is going to cover. You have Von Miller. You have um, Champ Bailey. You still got Champ Bailey. Yeah, man. It's it's and a you. it's going to be a great game. I think Denver will get them. Even though you do have Houston, you do have Andre Johnson, Don't Arian Foster, wrong. man. You have Arian Foster, Can't and then that out. defense too. Yeah, with Brian Cushing leading the helm. So, ah, uh, that's mm, that's a close one. I'll. I give it to Denver just because of the better defense, in my opinion. Uh, as far as the score goes, I have I have no idea at all. Cause that's yeah, as a, it's a two, flip. It's a, it's a coin flip. You have two high 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 potent offenses, mm-hmm. but then you have two really good defenses. So I mean, like, I mean, I, I probably couldn't. Couldn't put a score out there. If I had to guess, I'd say 28-21 Denver. I'll I take mean, you on that with 28-21. <laughs> oh, man. Um, okay. Big, big game. Rematch. AFC Conference Championship. Um, New England and Baltimore. What do you think about that one? Man, That's a big game. This That's is, a big one. To me, this is the AFC, cha- the, the AFC ch- 
ch- championship again, mm-hmm. even though it, w- it, w- it will be a rematch from the one from last year. Mm-hmm. Um, they're giving Baltimore two, two and a half. Mm-hmm. And, um, man, That's, I, I, yeah. I, I know the Patriots <laughs> lost Aaron Hernandez this past week. Mm-hmm. But we're talking about Tom Brady, man. Mm-hmm. Tom Brady. I mean, like, he's been what the best, probably the best quarterback of the decade. Mm-hmm. Uh, been to five Super Bowls, won three of them. Mm-hmm. I, 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 and I know that they got beat by the Cardinals last week, mm-hmm. which don't. It was. It must have been an act of God because I still <laughs> don't know how that that happened. But I think that Tom Brady comes back, and I think he is hungry, man. I know Ray Ray Lewis is on mm-hmm. the other side of the line, but. No Terrell Suggs. I got to go with New England on this one, probably by 35 to 31. Uh, well, this is why I disagree. Okay, I'm going to tell you why. Without Wes Welker, you oh, don't man. have an offense. They won't. First of all, you didn't pay this man. That was the main <laughs> contributor to your offense besides Tom Brady himself. That was your main contributor. You didn't pay him. Then you didn't work him in last week. So he's bitter already. That's number one. You really just don't have a running game in New England compared to what you have on Baltimore. You have Ray Rice. I know. He's a workhorse, but, okay, the New England main running back is Stephen Ridley, and he, he's been having an, a, a decent year. It's like, yeah. I, mean, I mean, it's not like he's going out there and pulling, like, a Chris Johnson that's going yeah. 11 carries that's, for 40 that's yards. Any, that's any of New England's running backs, though. Like, you just don't have a – a star feature yeah. back. Like, even Ben Jarvis, Green Ellis, the only reason why he was a star back is because he didn't fumble yeah. as long as he was there. The law so. firm, man. Yeah. So, with Baltimore, I just – I mean, that's a Super Bowl favorite. They're bringing it. Like you said, you got, you got Ray Flacco's Lewis. looking good. I will yeah. say that. You got you got Ray Lewis. You got Ed Reed back there, the ball hawk himself. Man. So, and then you got Haloti Nada, the big wall himself inside. I, I just got to give it to Baltimore. Um, High-scoring game – I don't. I really don't think so. Just because New England is probably going to hold the ball for forever, trying to scheme. Um, a score, I'll probably say twenty, twenty-four to thirteen. So it's not. It's not going to be too, too high. Okay. Um, and then prime time, man. Mm-hmm. Prime time Monday night. You know, that's the game that everybody is going to watch. Green Bay and Seattle. They're giving three to Green Bay, and I know all of you out there are thinking three points only to <laughs> Seattle. Well, you go and you watch last week's Cowboy game, mm-hmm. and you watch how physical that that second that that secondary is. Yeah. They might be top three secondaries in in the entire league, man. Mm-hmm. Cam Cam Chancellor, Marcus Trufant, um, Earl Thomas. They, I didn't. I thought Cowboys were gonna go in there and just just steamroll them. Obviously not. But like, I'm gonna tell you like this. I'm a Green Bay fan, die hard. I'm a cheesehead for life. But the thing that scares me about Seattle is this. You're in a conference where you can make it to the playoffs at 7 and 9. True. They always mess up something. They always mess up somebody's season. It's Seattle. They're over there with St. Louis, but it's still Seattle. The same Seattle that beat the Saints, that beat the Saints, just yeah. ran amok. In front of, first of all, Green Bay is in Seattle. The only reason why Seattle will win this game is because, only because, Green Bay's receiver is going to drop the ball more than three times, guaranteed, and it's going to be in crucial situations. Jam- we have Jermichael Finley. Man, he hasn't dropped the ball one of all the year. Most, yes, one of the most athletic tight ends in the league right now. He can't catch a cold yeah. in an Alaskan snowstorm. <laughs> I don't understand it. James Jones he drops the ball. Like, Go you, to have Jordy a- Nelson. you have Go Aaron Rodgers throwing you the ball. Catch everything. It's not like he's Tim Tebow throwing blindfolded. No, you have Aaron Rodgers, that's the only reason why Seattle will beat them. And if they do beat Green Bay, it'll be by a lot, simply because of yeah, the way. Yeah, I, I, the, I think it's going to be a. If they win, it's not like it's not. They're just going to go out there and win by like a touchdown. It's not going to be a close game. No, it's going to be if Seattle easily wins. seventeen plus. Yeah, easily, easily, just because of how Green Bay's defense is playing. They gave up the most a yards. A lot's going to matter year. on on a lot is going to a lot is going to be on Marshawn. Lynch's oh, shoulders yeah. too. Yeah, the Skittle man himself. You gotta feed him. You gotta feed. You gotta feed the beast mode. Mm-hmm. But that's just one dimensional. So if they do decide to throw the ball, I mean we, 
Green Bay. Russell they, Wilson's been tearing it up. Yeah, Green Bay. They have the defenders to to cover the pass, but their defense as a whole is not just they're not playing as a yeah. unit. So I say Seattle. Uh, I give them easily thirty four to something like thirteen or twelve. The upset. Like that. Yeah, that's going to be the upset. upset. And I don't. I don't even want to say that. I don't want to say that, but. I just I have to see I have to say what I see and that's, I'll agree that's with what you I there. See. That's what I see. Well, that's it for uh, this week's show. Make sure you tune in uh, every Friday. This has been topic of discussion. This is Caleb McCabe. I am Travion Davis, and that is it. <laughs>